Okay, let's figure this out. What order do I line up the effects inside my effects rack? It's a common question. Do I noise reduce first? Do I compress first? Do I gate? Do I EQ? Do I do all of those things? Do I do none of those things? Isabella, it's a minefield. What would you do? What would be the first effect that you would put in an effects rack if you wanted to make something sound good and it maybe had a bit of background noise? What? Let's test your knowledge here. Oh What's goodness. the first effect you'd put in your rack? Let's let's look at my screen and, and figure that out in a second. But before we do, Isabella, okay. pressure is on you. Pressure is Tell on me. me. And I, I feel like I'm taking an exam and I'm just about to fail. So if you asked me, I would probably say I would reduce the noise first. Yes, ah! absolutely. Yay! Spot on. You are the winner. <laughs> so yes, you do your noise reduction first. And if you remember just one thing from this video as I work in Adobe Audition, noise reduction first. So let me record something here. Okay, this is Mike Russell. And... There's a lot we can do with effects in the effects rack of Adobe Audition or our own favorite audio editor. So there you go. Obviously, I've got a nice microphone. I've got a nice studio. So that helps. Now, the reason I always have spectral frequency display is because I can see more of what's going on with the voice, but also what's going on in the quiet bits. Ideally, quiet bits should always be black. But as you can see, a bit of room noise, maybe my air purifier is too loud or the, the fan on my computer is too loud. It's all down here in the bass but it's, it's not too bad. If it was bad, this would all be red and orange. Purple is kind of okay, but we can, yes, work on that. Now, why do I not say, well, compress first, okay? This is such a common question. Where do I put my effects? If I go ahead and grab my Dynamics effect, and we'll set this to default and put a compressor on, and we'll make that compressor really harsh by pushing the threshold down and the ratio right up. This is going to squash my voice down. Have a look at that. Two to nothing. <laughs> it's terrible. This is really, you'd never use this kind of compression. But this is an example. Now I'm going to turn the makeup gain up to make that a bit louder. Uh, and still, it doesn't quite get loud enough. So I might move the threshold up a bit just so we can get something that's relatively easy to see. Okay, so there's my audio. And as I put compression on before I did any noise reduction, Isabella, maybe you can tell me, looking at the before, up the top, and after, what you think has happened to my audio because I compressed and didn't noise reduce first. Well, you've compressed the noise too, right? You I've sucked have, it up. Yeah. So you would have, you would have like, increased the bad stuff. Exactly. Should we listen? Okay. Yeah. Well, so, obviously your audio isn't kind of, you know, it's not a bad audio, so it's... Not to start with. But if there was a fan or something terrible in there, it would yeah. really enhance it. Let's just listen. So without any compression... Okay. This is Mike Russell, and okay, you can hear it sounds pretty fine. You but could record it on your internal microphone, and I then should, we can have some fun. But I have that. a I have a fancy PC without one, so oh. uh, so let me play this back now. Okay, this is Mike Russell, and there's a lot we can do with. So you can absolutely hear that that background noise has got louder now. As Isabella said, I've got a good room. Let's try and turn this audio up. There you go. It's just maybe it's hiss. That might even be hiss from my audio interface, but that's getting dragged up by the compressor. So don't put that on first, but I'm going to leave that compressor now. I'm going to move it to slot two and disable it, and I'm going to do noise reduction first. Now, there are many ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways, if you do have a fan or something like that, is to go to noise reduction and use denoise in Adobe Audition. As you can see, it's pretty good. Look at what it's doing. This is at 54%. Now I'm going to push this right up, maybe to 83%, and look at how black now that background noise gets. Unfortunately, with this kind of noise reduction effect, it will sort of maybe introduce a few artifacts to the audio. Okay, this is Mike Russell, but it's, it's not too bad. You can just hear a tiny bit of artifacting there on the voice. Now if I add my super duper compressor, you can see how less it's dragged up the background noise. Switch off denoise and it gets worse. You see, that's why we denoise first. Now in my instance, where I am working with already pretty good audio, I would never use denoise. And, and funny enough, the amount of voiceover artists uh, I, I work with and I see who are saying that, you know, I record this fancy audio in a fancy vocal booth and it sounds great. And then when I get it into my audio editor, I run a denoise plugin in. I'm, I'm like, no, don't do that. You've spent thousands on your studio and a good quality microphone. And then you're ruining the quality by adding a noise reduction plugin. So in my instance, and your instance, if you have a really good room without any fans or problems like that, is not to use any of these noise reduction plugins, but actually to go ahead and put in a Dynamics effect, which has Autogate. And if we set this correctly, Autogate, as I've explained in other videos, will open and close uh, when audio goes above and below a certain level. And look at how beautiful that is 
much better than Denoise now, with the dynamics effect on, it's nicely compressed, it's got the gate going on. Obviously, if you have more going on, like a fan, you definitely want to get into the, the realm of denoise or noise reduction. And then in between the noise reduction and the compression should go the equalizer. So one, noise reduction, two, equalize, three, compress. And if you remember one thing from this video, one, reduce noise, two, equalize, three, compress. Okay, one, reduce noise, two, equalize, three, compress. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. And then I'm just going to throw in a bit of compression um, because this is a bit of a, a, a sore spot, all right? And I'm going to tell you why it is a sore spot because people will argue with me. The comments to this video will actually say, no, Mike, you compress, then you equalize. Any mastering expert knows you compress, then you equalize. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why I believe that's not the best method. If I add on a parametric equalizer, and let's just put on, I'm just going to put some basic EQ. I'm not even going to listen to the audio, but I'm going to put what I think might be some good EQ. Okay, lots of high end, too much high end. <laughs> if you want to really know how to use an equalizer, watch my other videos. But just in this instance, I've added some EQ, and that's all looking nice and compressed and, you know, a nice sausage waveform. Now let's move this down after the compression. So we actually compress first, then EQ. And watch what happens to the waveform in the bottom. See, it goes spiky again, spiky, spiky, because we've compressed, then we've tweaked some frequencies, so we've created more peaks, and we no longer have that nice compressed sound that we were aiming for. Now, I do understand there are many different use cases, and maybe if you're working with dialogue, narration, audio books, you don't want something super compressed. But I find it's better to EQ and get it sounding exactly right, and once you have it sounding exactly right, you can then add on compression to your heart's content. And that may not be a compressor that looks like, let's, let's put that in the right slot, it may not be a compressor that looks like a minus 43 dB threshold and an 8 to 1 ratio. That's just stupid. But I could easily move this down to 5 and this up to minus 21, something like that. Ooh, and turn the makeup gain down to get rid of that distortion. And, you know, that is nice compression compared to that. Probably a bit too much kind of radio imaging style compression there. Uh, if we move it down to two, that's going to be more dialogue-based compression. And again, move that equalizer after the compressor. And look, it's all spiking up again and distorting because, you know, so the compressor catches all that. So that is it. That is the end of the tutorial. But if you remember one thing, one, reduce noise. Two, equalize. Three, compress. The end. Thumbs up. Music Radio Creative.com